Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! And welcome back to the absolutely beautiful zone that is now our gorgeous, gorgeous temperate forest zone with our maple tree corridor that we made. And it is so pretty! I just love all these colors! This is amazing! It totally has a nice autumn feel to it as well. It kind of makes me want to put like a bunch of blackberries all around the place, maybe some pumpkins. Oh, that would be kind of fun to decorate for Halloween. But we'll have to do that another day because today, today I have something quite big and quite exciting to show you. Are you guys ready for this? Are you sure? All right, hold on to the seat of your pants because ta-da! Look at this! Look at this! This is going to be our woodpecker temperate bird forest aviary and I'm quite proud of it and the puppies and the slug little slug. Oh, you're so cute. I think I called you a snail yesterday. You're not a snail. You're a little slug and you're adorable. But the puppies and the slug have been watching me build it and it took a little while, but it was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be because we just kind of built on top of the trees. Oh, I'm too hungry. Puppies, I've been working so hard. I've been working so hard, puppies. I don't even have enough energy. Don't even have enough energy to run. Ooh, I love those footlongs. My goodness, they just fill you straight up. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so we're gonna pop over here. Ooh, and we've got some avocados up here. Don't mind me, just gonna harvest some wild avocados. Uh, I hear they grow wild all over California, which is kind of cool, because they're like $2 a piece where I live on the East Coast. They're very expensive little things. Um, and they require quite often vegan cooking as a little FYI. But let's see, I'm gonna try to hop over here. All right, oh, nope, didn't work, didn't work. But basically it was a lot easier to build this than I thought it would be because we were able just to kind of climb across the treetops and I kept everything sort of level, but I really like this. So instead of going with like a clear glass, we went with this gorgeous little aviary looking thing and I have added in the little waterfall. Oh, it's kind of, I wish I had some feather falling on my little bootsies right here right now, but yeah, we're good. All right, watch out, little slug. Oh, he's so cute. I don't know why. I just, I love slugs lately, especially. Have you guys ever seen how absolutely amazing marine slugs look like? And there's so many pretty colors. Oh, they're gorgeous. We should have like a bunch of tanks of marine slugs one day. That's a goal. That's another goal, puppies. Put it on the list. The ever expanding list. And as you can see, I remembered this time to already build the aviary so that you have double doors so that none of the birds will escape as you come on in. And we still have these mysterious chestnuts. And I'm not sure. Like, am I supposed to break it? And <gasps> that's how you get a chestnut. So we're going to be looking at the chestnut burrs um, today as well, because apparently that's how you get them. But we are inside of the aviary now. So as you can see, it's pretty nice. I put down a few of our little glow light mushrooms and glow light uh, tree stumps all around the place. This is where we're hopefully going to be having our little wood duck family move in. I'm pretty excited about that. And I hope that once we get the woodpeckers in here, they'll be able to kind of like dig some holes in the various trees. We might even be able to get some maple sap from some of the trees. That might be kind of fun. But what we're going to work on today is adding in the pileated woodpeckers, which are a huge big old species of woodpecker. They're quite interesting to me. They're about, uh, they're well over a foot. So they'd basically be like one of these whole blocks. Um, no, they'd be like eh, maybe a half the block. Half the block if you were going to look at like every block being three feet and I have no idea how that math works. I shouldn't try to math. Basically they're about 15 to 20 inches long. Very big birds. Very big birds and they're amazing little things because they will burrow holes into trees. They'll, they'll like peck away into the trees and make huge holes compared to other woodpeckers because they're big woodpeckers and what they're doing is they're normally boom, 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 pushing their way into the wood so that that they can find ants. They love eating carpenter ants. They love eating wood boring beetle larva, termites. Sometimes they'll find things like caterpillars or flies, cockroaches, grasshoppers. So they're mostly an insective and like an insectivore. Their diet specializes primarily in eating insects. But since we're going to be adding the pileated woodpeckers in here, I also want to try adding in at least three or four other food varieties for them. If I could find a grasshopper, that would be amazing. So we might look around the forest for a grasshopper today. Oh, and look at all the little, the little chestnut burrs and put those in here. I want to go and get some of the water plants that we could put up around this little lake right here so that we could make the area nice for our wood ducks, which I need to do more research on so we can learn about what wood ducks are like because they're just so pretty. And that would be so cute to have a whole bunch of little baby ducks hiding in that tree. Are you kidding? That would be like the best thing ever. It would be so cute. 
And then um, I also learned that, you know, when the woodpecker is digging its way into these trees, then it makes uh, homes for a lot of other birds too. Not only will they dig out cavities for the wood ducks, but also house wrens really enjoy being where woodpeckers are and they'll actually feed off of some of the insects that you can find inside of woodpecker holes. So I was thinking it would be nice to add some house wrens and the twilight forest. Oh my gosh, it pricks you. I like walked into it and it smacked me in the face. That startled me so much. <laughs> but basically, um, house wrens look kind of like the Twilight Forest little teensy birds. So we might go there one day soon to gather up some birdos to add in here. I don't know about the bluebird. What do you guys think? I'm not sure if I'm feeling the bluebird in this particular exhibit. I feel like the bluebird needs to go in maybe like an exhibit that we have a lot of bees in or maybe an exhibit that just has like more flowering sort of things. I sort of want to make this a habitat where it's like more mature deciduous plants. If you guys remember Remember from yesterday, our zoo word of the day, deciduous, means that they will lose their leaves in the autumn. So I kind of want to put those guys in here instead. Um, let's see, yeah, but that's that's the goal. So we are going to go try to get some plants, Lily, Pine, and Zoe, back at the house. Um, that will reflect more of the woodpecker diet or the diet of their little insect animals. In fact, I'm kind of curious. Come on, puppies, let's go this way first. I want to go this way first because there's some waterways down here. Ooh, look at all the pretty little herbs. There are some waterways down here that I bet we could find some water plants at. Oh my gosh, there's like so many plants over here. We're going to have to come over and do like a little foraging side quest sometime soon. <gasps> Jeez, horse! For some reason I thought you were like some sort of horrifically miscolored enderman and you scared the badoodads out of me. Thank you, Mr. Horse. Oh my gosh. Oh, I need a moment. Oh my goodness. I don't know why that scared me so much. What? Okay, so these look like they're poisonous. Lily, Tate, Pine, or Lily, Pine, or Lily, Zoe, Pine. There we go. <laughs> Lily, Zoe, Pine, please watch out for these dwarf elders. It turns out that they are shrubs that are poisonous. I'll have to look them up. You can turn them into cactus greens, though, so that's nifty. Well, I'm just going to put you back down there. All right, hello, horse. So there's a bunny. I don't see any plants that we could put down as, okay, and there, the horse is just swimming away. That's fine. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, and we'll kind of dig our way through here. Wow, there's like lots of wild plants. Oh, I just, I can't believe this is our own backyard and we so rarely explore it. You know what I mean? All right. Oh, and look at that. Look at how cool that looks. As much, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize we had it so close. What? That is totally exciting and new. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? Oh, 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 nope, 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 nope. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what's going on there, but that doesn't mean I want to be sucked into the- There's a sinkhole in here. Mr. Horse, okay, you can get out okay, it looks like. Alright, so it's not pulling the animals in. There's like some sort of giant sinkhole in the water there. Leading down to who knows what, and there's some ore berries. Well, geez, that's a mystery and a half right behind our house, Lily. And it's really fun as we continue to like build and just really rapidly expand our exhibits to see our exhibits just standing out over here. I love the wilderness, don't get me wrong. Look at this untouched, like perfect land with dogs swimming and poisonous elders and things like that but as we build more i'm really 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 falling in love with having our exhibits in the distance and feeling like we're building a huge zoo and we're going to be building our heads off i'm so excited no 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 no. don't need okay careful guys i think this is like we'll have to investigate that if we have time we'll investigate that later because i'm kind of curious about it what who's, who's who's being hurt what's happening pine get out of there no pine you can't swim why do you try? You want to be like your dad so badly. Take the fisher dog. And you, you can't swim. You're not a fisher dog. Well, he is. He's actually a really good fisher dog if you looked at his stats. But for some reason, he can't swim. So he inherited his dad's talent for fishing. But the poor boy can't swim. It's a terrible irony. All right. We're going to come around and let's collect up some of the stuff we're finding. Since we are going to be building more exhibits. And these leaf piles are always useful. I won't collect too much though because we are looking for some water plants. Shouldn't take too long. And some of the other things that pileated woodpeckers, oh actually maybe we could use these somewhere. 
Some of the other things that pileated woodpeckers eat are actually um, like blackberries or persimmons. Uh, they'll eat uh, hackberries, let's see, sumac berries, even poison ivy. So those are, those are things that make up some of their diet. Um, but really, they focus primarily on insects. There was actually a study done on the diet of the pili- Oh, there's a little slime island up there. I didn't know that. See what I mean? The things in our own backyard, my goodness. But there was actually a study done to see what uh, the pileated woodpecker diet was primarily made up of, and they found that it depended on the woodpecker. Some of them would eat only 40% of their diet would be ants, and in other woodpeckers, 97% of their diet was ants. So it's like just the blackberry for, for the cherry on top of the ant hill, I guess, Lily. So it was really uncommon for them to eat anything other than ants. Um, all right, we really need to find, and I can't wait to mess with these chestnut burrs later. That's going to be fun. I really need to find where the heck a doodle the water plants are because we have some good waterways. Hello chickens! You want to come live in my in my farm? I'll take you to my farmland. I need to make like <gasps> I need to make like chicken paradise. Oh, and there is an inch right there, so we're gonna give him some respectful space. Let's see. So there's more of these. Oh, there's a little snake. It's a little coral snake. Okay, we need to use caution. Um, see, this is more what I'm talking about. Like those water plants over there. Oh, there's a lot of water plants over there. Oh my goodness. Woo! Woo! He's coming for me. No, thank you. Oh, why did I think I could outrace a water snake in the water? Not the smartest move. Swim for your life, Siri. Is he still chasing me? You know, really aggressive. What? What? <laughs> really aggressive snakes will actually uh, continue to chase you once you're, you, you've made them angry. What, what's going on? Pine! What did we just talk about? Pine, I'm sorry, that was my fault. I went in the water. Okay, I got him. Oh my gosh. Well, that was a little bit too exciting. And then like a giant blue, why is, there's a giant blue slime somewhere nearby. He might try to poke at us, so I'll keep that in mind. Oh look, there's more chestnuts. Ah, and, oh there's, oh there he is. Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> the things that you could only see here in Zudesia, where we mix the realistic with the fancy, like fanciful, and we end up with giant blue slimes hopping across the distance. And here's all the plants I wanted, but I guess I need to go. Oh, and there's a bunch of oil. Don't swim in that, puppies. All right, I'm going to gather up these chestnuts because I love eating chestnuts. Where the. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is a blue slime prolific island, it seems. Um, is this like a king blue slime or just a normal blue slime? Oh, here we go. Lily doesn't like this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and now we are surrounded by wild blue slime. So this is an interesting day indeed. Um, can I catch you, sir? Don't land on me. Don't land on me. Don't land on me. I think you'd smush me. I think you'd smush me. Can I get you? Oh, oh jeez. I got him. <laughs> So we have this giant blue slime. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with him, but that's interesting. All right, Pine, get out of the water! What did we just talk about? Okay, can I get him out of the water? Is he coming? All right, Pine, you sit. Sit. And let's see. So here are some of the plants that we, we were coming all this way. I can't believe, yeah, the mix of, like, kind of wonderland mix of all of these amazing animals and a beautiful natural environment and a swimming carrot bun, yet again, hunting for those carrot fish, mixed with uh, the mystical of the slime island. So, oh, and there's a baby slime! I know! Did I take your, your parrot? I'm sorry. Well, you're not gonna hurt me, so you just, you just chill. Alright, and Lily and Zoe, can you guys sit so you don't steal my stuff? And I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna get the common reeds. There we go. Watch out, little blue slime. So I'm going to gather up some of the common reeds. And there's actually a lot of fungus over here, which is fantastic, because that is going to help with the health of our maple trees. All right, good. And this one propagated, so I'll leave some behind. Because maple trees, it turns out, actually will get some beneficial fungi that will grow on them. So I meant to gather some of these artist conchs and some of the other, the other like, wood-bearing like the turkey tail, these kinds of guys that'll go up on trees and wood. Oh, oh my gosh. The bunny and the mouse. I wonder, I wonder what's going on there. Because uh, what the fungi can do on the maple trees is actually perform a beneficial relationship, meaning that they will help the tree. Oh my goodness. I have a grave in my own backyard, little mouse. I didn't, how do I not know about these things? I live here. No, no sign, no sign on you, huh? Okay. Makes me nervous. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> the things we find on specimen or on expedition Saturdays. Even though this wasn't really meant to be an expedition. Oh good, here's some more. Here's some more Ars conks. But yeah, gathering these up, um, what the fungi does, so what this does on the tree is it will gather up different kinds of nutrients from the air, from the soil, from dead matter that happens to like pile up around the tree. And some of the fungi will actually return those nutrients to the tree, even though they'll take some of the nutrients from the tree as well. So it depends on what type of fungus it is. If you're going to end up with a beneficial relationship and you have the fungus returning the nutrients to the tree, or if you're going to end up with a parasitic relationship in which the nutrients are taken from the tree to the fungus. So now you have learned even more more zoo facts of the day here with siri i hope you guys enjoy all right let's gather up these cattails they're really what i was looking for and anything else over here that looks kind of good like it would go maybe those watery things over there so let's climb around here hello pigus lots of pigus wild chocobos roaming around uh evidence of wild chocobos roaming around whoa and a giant cobra <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, let's try to ignore the giant cobra. Um, I think those I, I want to are you gonna take him on bunny? Okay, he wasn't he was possibly going for that bunny there as food All right, so let's try taking some of these too. I think these would be good and actually adding a water snake is something I want to do as well So if we stumble on just the right one though, you really don't want to stumble on a water snake while you're in the water I eh, Really Really? Oh, there's a water snake. No way! Is that a little water snake? You know what? I think that is. That's perfect! Because there's actually a really cool little video I wanted to show you guys that has a water snake here in North Carolina, where I live, pulling a gigantic catfish out of the water to eat. Because water snakes, harmless, non-venomous, even though as infants, little itty bitty baby snakes, they look quite similar to the water moccasin, which is not harmless, Mr. Mr. Horse there. Not harmless at all. Uh, but yeah, water snakes uh, eat fish, and so there's a little clip, and if I can remember, I'll put it in the video description, of this water snake trying to eat this giant catfish, and it's totally amazing. I have no idea, because the little video is so short, if he was actually successful at pulling the catfish out of the water to eat, but it was just really cool to see how ambitious he was going to be. He had his fish, he wanted to eat it. So I'll see if I can share that with you guys. So let's see, lots of, lots of mice. Um... I'm gonna have to let this blue slime go, aren't I? All right, let's see. I want that sneak because the water sneak is more relevant to what we're doing than this than um, This slime and I can always find more slime. So I'm gonna release the slime Hey puppies, and I'll gather up my puppies because we're gonna be moving 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 and grooving And also I need to make sure I find all of them. Okay, and I'm gonna release the slime over here Back kind of around his native habitat and there you go, sir. Oh, he's he's oh my gosh. <gasps> You guys, he ate me! I've been eaten by slime. That's what I get. That's what I get for trying to be nice and just be like, you can live, Mr. Slime. You can stay here. Oh, my puppies are going to be so mad. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I did not expect that to happen. I was not expecting to run into opposition. I ran into the opposition. I'm I'm not pleased. I've I've been eaten by a slime. I'm trying to figure out what to do about this. <laughs> Alright, well I'm gonna I'm gonna load up with some gear and I'm going to go back with a little little tiny sword. Um little itty bitty tiny sword here. Yay, my little stone sword. Oh wow, I can't believe I've not made a sword yet. That is hilarious. And we're gonna go back and get my stuff. Oh, and I also meant to show you guys this. So this is going to be our future temperate forest informational cabin. So you can come up and you can, yeah, I know, I know my grave is waiting for me, but it'll, it'll be okay. I haven't been killed in a long time. That was a little, that was a little bit unexpected. And by a slime, that's kind of embarrassing. It's like, what did he do, suffocate me to death? Oh, and I guess I had taken off my armor. How embarrassing. All right, but. This is going to be our informational booth, our informational cabin. I kind of whipped it up uh, last night. And what we're going to have in here is a bunch of like little flyers and posters about the like natural life cycle of trees and why temperate forests are so cool. And maybe like a little I heart red wolf sort of thing and an NPC who you can talk to who will tell you a little bit more about the animals and books that will be specifically written. So if you want to know a lot more about the animals, you can find out. But my goodness, this is this is slightly 
<laughs> I didn't expect this to happen. I was just supposed to go and get some water plants so we can work on our woodpecker exhibit. How embarrassing. Well, egg on my face. That that goes to show what, you know, you, you can show sympathy to those predators and all the time. And it doesn't matter. Don't you dare attack me, Mr. Boar. I'm not in the mood right now. You can show sympathy to those little guys and you just don't know what might happen. And Pine, hey, buddy. He's like, Mom, there you are. I was running back to find your scent. I'm so sorry, Pine. I didn't mean to worry you. All right, that slime better not have messed with my, my plants. Because those were, those were hard collected plants. Achoo! Oh, pardon me. I guess I'm allergic to slimes. My goodness. Maybe I am, actually. <gasps> it's, it's a little... Oh, I need you. I need you a little insect so we can add him to the, the aviary for the birds to eat. All right. So Slime Island's right over here. Where is Mr. Slime who just, who just ate me? Where's my little grave? I guess we'll have a new grave for my collection of graves. I think it's right over here. Aha, there we go. That wasn't so bad. Oh, come on, Pine. There we go. All right. Well, we have my grave from when I was killed by a slime. So there. That's much better. And I hear Pine drowning. Pine, I love you, but you cannot swim. If I could give you, like, puppy swim lessons, I totally would. You just, you can't swim for anything. All right. Well, I'm going to put my gear on this time. And I have a new gravestone, so we have added to the gravestone pile for the day, everybody. Isn't that exciting? And I throw my stone sword at you, sir. All right, so I guess that Pine, I'm so proud of you. I guess that means that you took on the slime and you won, and I am proud of you, boy. I am so proud of you. We'll have to see if you have something interesting in your inventory later. Good boy. Good boy. So many puppy treats for you. So many puppy treats. In fact, do I have any chicken? I'm sure I had chicken somewhere. Uh, I have some, oh, here we go, chicken, rice, and blueberry. There you go, buddy. All right, let's go get your, your aunt and Zoe. All right, let's go see. There they are. Lily, Zoe, no worries. Something dramatic may have happened without your, like, knowledge, but we're fine. We're fine now. Have some food. I need to go get that water snake. But yeah, like I was saying, huge giant catfish that this snake is trying to eat, and it just totally impressed me. Whoops, now there's another type of snake, but I want our little water snake that we ran into and also some of these cattails. Thank you, Zoe. All right, let's see. There's a zebra. We'll have to get you out to our savanna plains one day, sir. And then where is that water snake? You are going to be in an exhibit, Mr. Water Snake. Did he go this way? I'm going to have to get Pine out of the water. Pine, come here. You sink like a rock. <laughs> I have a puppy who can't who can't dog paddle. Oh, all right. So let's see. Uh, was that the water snake actually? I think maybe that was my little water snake. Um, you know what? I'm okay with that. So let's go catch him. Because I was thinking if we had time today, I wanted to actually build a water snake exhibit because of how cool it was to see that little clip of just that little snake trying so hard to eat the big giant catfish. And I thought in honor of that, we could build like a tiny little water snake exhibit. All right, so I'm going to gather up these reeds. Um, let's see, there's another snake up there. That is a venomous cobra, though, so we're going to leave him alone. And let's see, that's a chocobo and a pig. Let's see, and there's that sword. There's, is that what remains of my, my opponent? The vicious foe who slaughtered me? Is this you? Is that you? Hmm? Hmm? Let's see, anything I want in here? I think, I think we're okay. I think we're good. Um, I'll collect up a few of these little, like, duckweed things. Just really quickly, just in case they're what we want. And let us go back, my friends. So now we're going to return, kind of spruce up the waterways in that exhibit. And while we're at it, since we have the water snake, I might kind of show you guys where I was thinking of putting the water snake exhibit. Ooh, is this some more? There are wild chestnuts everywhere. Man, we could just have quite the fun time camping in our own backyard here. It's very, very, very interesting. All right, apparently I walked through something poisonous, possibly that woolly galampus. All right, we okay over here? Yeah, we're okay over here. My goodness. What a morning! All right, let's rush back. We haven't even gotten the woodpeckers yet. I know, I need to hurry up. Chop, chop. Move those bunny hunkers. All right, let's see. We're gonna come down here. Oh, and I'm hungry again. Uh, well, we have some candied lemon. Puppies, no candied lemon for you. I don't think it's very good for doggies to have candied lemon. All right, I'll have to grab more food when we go get the woodpeckers out of the stasis chamber, our cryogenics lab where Professor Cowplant III is currently watching over them. All right, so let's do this. 
Now this is actually the spot right here that I was thinking of turning into a little water snake exhibit. And after having found the water snake and having that little adventure, I think that would be a lot of fun. So we'll probably work on that if we have some time today. That's where we're gonna be putting the water snake. For now, let's pop in here and let's figure out the best collection of the various water plants, the watercress and the duck potato and the common reeds that we have gathered. Uh, we also have some of the mushrooms now, turkey's tail and artist conks that I'm going to be putting up on these maple trees because like I mentioned earlier, they have a beneficial relationship with some types of fungi. If it's these exact types of fungi, I don't know, but we'll find out. All right, how you doing puppies? They're doing okay. All right, so let's see. Common reeds, cattails, common duckweed, river cane. Can I even put river cane down? <gasps> oh, I can. Okay. That's not bad. Not bad. I, I kind of need my little, my little set of shears again. Okay, so you can put river cane down. I didn't know that. Um, let's do some, some cattails. Yeah, because I'm sure the ducks, I don't know what would ducks eat yet, but I'm sure that they would like to have some nesting material of some kind that they can ha harvest. Um, some watercress. The watercress actually looks really nice as just, oh, that's a piece of stone. No wonder I couldn't put it down there. And then maybe some duck, oh, duck potato for the wood ducks. Oh, I love it. Duck potato for the wood ducks. Um... I think we'll go ahead and we'll keep the water cane or the river cane out or does it add like a little bit of balance to these? I don't know. What if I just put down a normal cattail and let it grow? Hmm. We'll see. All right. And then I think I'm going to put another cattail here and is that enough? And maybe, maybe some duckweed. Ha ha ha. Duck potato and duckweed for the little area. Actually, that's nice. It doesn't need a lot. It doesn't need a lot. So we're done there. And just because we already have the water plants on us, let me see, do I have a bucket? Bucket, 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 I've got buckets. All right, is there a spot where I can collect water from over here and have it just keep refilling? Is it that good? Yeah, there we go. So just because we already have the water plants and the water snake and we wanna make some progress today, let's go ahead and let's see, I wanna fill this little area up with water. Puppies, what are you guys growling about, huh? Huh? Um, let's go ahead and have the water coming down from here. Like so. Yay! And it's gonna fill this area up. Pine, get out of the water! <laughs> he worries me so much. He really does. And then we'll just kind of like start filling this area in slowly but surely. With the water, and this will be like just a little northern water snake exhibit, just a small little one. We can have the water snake kind of floating around in the water. I'll close it off with a little bit of a fencing. Uh, it, it should look pretty nice. I'm pretty excited about that. All right, and if I could, I would put the water plants down, but I'm gonna have to fill this thing up first. Maybe that won't take very long. Hang on, just a second. Better to just get it done instead of add it to our eternal to-do list. All right. No, really, I love having so much to do in the zoo, you guys. And I love sharing it with you guys. Have you guys ever seen water snakes? I'm actually really curious. Oh, little slug, what you doing? Are you being a water slug? You sure are. But I'm actually really curious at how many of you have actually seen water snakes. Oh, no, no, slug. Slug, I need to help you. Here, sit, snake, go there. Oh, slug, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, I'm too late. I'm too late. This is all that's left of him. I love that slug. What a tragic day. I love that slug for two whole days. That's like, that's like an eternity in slug years. He was my best friend and now he's gone. Well, no, he wasn't really my best friend. I'm exaggerating out of my grief, but still, but still. Poor little slugs. It's a hard life for the invertebrates. A very hard life indeed. But yeah, how many of you guys, going back to the water snakes, how many of you guys have seen them in the wild? Um, or even, like, when I say in the wild, I've seen them at my park, the lake that I constantly am walking at. And sometimes we'll have some fun vlogs over from my little lake that we live next to. Pine, get out of the water. Like, okay, puppies, you guys gotta come this way. I'm gonna make you sit. Look at how cool this is. We're getting so much done lately. I'm so proud of us. All right, sit down. All right, I'm gonna put you over here. But yeah, because a lot of people freak out when it comes to snakes. And they're really, like, if you ever really meet a snake, they don't really do a lot. Like, it's not really anything to freak out over. They just kind of 
they just kind of sit there like even the really venomous snakes now i will admit there are exceptions there are some species that i would never want to run into like the king cobra the king cobra is going to chase you down and try to eat you like well not eat you he's going to chase you down and try to bite you if he feels like you are in an area that threatens his well-being and that's fascinating to me and there are very aggressive snakes in africa as well that will not put up with humans messing around in their area uh, or any predator really and they ooh. <gasps> We're done! We did it! We did it! I'm so happy! Oh my gosh! Usually it takes me forever and a day to get the water done. Oh, that's wonderful! But yeah, so there are some aggressive species of snake, but for the most part, you don't have to freak out, guys. It's going to be fine. They're not going to eat you. Um, and especially water snakes, which are killed so often, or oops, didn't mean to do that which are killed so so often because they look like water moccasins even a water moccasin now if if you don't mess with them they usually don't mess with you uh you should always use extreme caution when you are around these snakes don't get me wrong but you don't have to go out of your way it's not like it's not like a if i don't kill you you're gonna kill me sort of thing Mostly, don't forget, it's exhausting for a snake to have venom used up, and they're only going to use it up in most cases. Uh, like I said, always be careful, because you don't know, maybe you just have a really ill-natured snake for some reason. But in most cases, they're only going to use their venom on you if they think they're, they're in danger or threatened. Because it's pretty exhausting to use up your supply of venom, so don't, don't panic, snakes aren't all evil. They're not all out to get you. I'm so excited. Look at this. We're throwing together a little mini side exhibit just like that. Oh, normally it takes us forever to get everything done, but we are on fire right now. Why can't I put you anywhere, Common Reed? What is with this, hmm? Hmm? Immersed. Does it need to be too deep then? So if I do this, will you go in the water here? Oh, because it's grass. That's why. That's why. I'm on to you now. I know how to make this happen. I know how to get some progress done in here. Alright, but we really need to go get the woodpeckers. <laughs> and we need to go get their blackberries and, let's see, sumac berries if I can find any. We'll have to check what's inside our supply when we go back to the plant sorting shed. Alright, so there's that. There's some watercress. Dang it! I should have dug up the ground first. I hadn't realized that it would be such a, such a bit of, such a spot of trouble. Even though we had the same problem with the tiger exhibit, didn't we? Oh, I miss our tigers. I can't wait to go and see how they're doing. I can't wait to get more keepers put in here so that we can really have conversations about the animal's well-being. All right, let's do this. And actually, if you guys like, um, there is a channel called Big Cat Diaries, and they're cougars. There, just celebrated their 10th birthday, and they put out so many presents for the cougars to just kind of dig up and tear apart, and it was really fun to see, and I love seeing those kinds of enrichment things, and I would love to do that for our animals here in the zoo in the future. All right, I'm going to put down a little bit of duckweed. There we go, some little duckweed, uh, maybe some common reeds. Ooh, they, make, they would make like a good background. I think these common reeds. There we go. Any other water plants? So we can kind of just add some stray water plants over here. Um, maybe make like a little stone basking spot in the center and a brown stone in the future. I think that would be interesting. And when we pop by the house in just a second, I'll grab some fencing and we can just kind of fence this area off and bada bing, bada boom, poof. We have now got what is going to become a water snake exhibit. And we even have the water snake, which is so cool. Oh, we are on it. We're on fire puppies. All right. And I'm going to come in here really quickly and I'm going to sprinkle on a few a few fungi, kind of where people can see them too, so that they can be like, wow, what's this? Oh, a beneficial relationship with the tree? That's fascinating. Ooh, we have another, we have another burr changing colors here, so we'll figure out what to do with the burrs later too. All right, so let's go get our woodpeckers. So we're going to go get our woodpeckers. We're going to go get uh, some plants for the woodpeckers to be able to enjoy, like the hackberries. Um, you know, and I wish I could have caught that fly to put in with them. Oh, deer, always gave me that little bit of lag, aren't you, deer? That's okay. And I really like our cabin. So the informational cabin should go up pretty soon. And we'll start organizing this area a little bit better because it's still kind of, it's so pretty with the wisteria gazebo. And, oh, who's that? <gasps> 
Look, it's Maple! It's Maple the Red Wolf and she's just running around. Oh, that is so cool. And just imagine, I just remembered we want to bring the wisteria over here. So just imagine having the wisteria growing down some bushes along here. Lily, are you looking at... <laughs> Lily, she's looking at her statue all excited. That's the most adorable thing I've seen in ages. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, this is going to be awesome. And pretty soon the entire zoo is going to start to look more like this, where you can look around and apparently see wolves and trees. That's fine, Redwood. That's fine. Um, oh, look, and there's Meadow. Oh, that's so exciting. And Zoe's quite interested in what her cousins are up to. Ah, oh, so fun. But it'll be like this, where you can see buildings, and you know there's going to be information. You can see cool things in the distance. You can see little shops. You can see guests walking around. Ah, oh, we're making progress. Oh, my gosh, and there's Mr. Mittens. It's been a while, Mr. Mittens. Fluffy Mittens. How you doing? Hunting those carrot fish, huh? Keep up the good work. Keep up the work, good work, Bun Bun. And then I also talked to you guys a couple days ago about we'll start going through and we will swap out these signs that we have with little symbols. So we'll have like the little uh, temperate forest leaf symbol instead of the sign. And I think that's going to be so cool and have some archways. Ah. We're making progress, or like things like this. Imagine if instead of a wall of dirt that you stare at, there was a cool sign that maybe had some information about some of our animals, or it was like, check out our tiger exhibit, or enjoy the Peafowl Cafe. Maybe, because we can put pictures all over the zoo, maybe we should start like saying, hey guys, if you want to make like advertisements for Zudessia and send them in, we can start hanging them up, because that would be really cool too. All right, so let's pop over here. Ooh, and you know, Give me just a second, you guys, because we actually have something kind of important to do. Coming over and gathering up the sugarcane pine, who's going to sit and stay here and wait like a good puppy. Gathering up the sugarcane is actually very important because Primrose and Bluebell need their constant supply of sugar. I need to feed those two. It's so cute the way they have like little temper tantrums if you don't feed them in time. So I want to make sure we avoid a temper tantrum. Plenty of sugar. Whoops. All right, I wonder if you can like cook sugar down from the maple like syrup. I don't think you can, but that would be interesting if you could. All right, our wild rice patty, which I haven't gathered from in ages. We'll do that one day. Um, and I'm gonna gather, see it's just the little chores around the zoo that we need to do. Oh, I'm, so, I'm hungry again. Oh, it's a good thing we're going back soon. I'm gonna down the strawberry juice. Gonna have to get some food and get our woodpeckers for crying out loud. All right. There's just so much to do in the zoo. So much to do in life. All right, and it's very important just to take a second, grab some of this stuff, and let's run for it. There we go. There we go. All right, pine. See, just a couple seconds and we can get a little chore done like that that is going to help us very, very much with running the zoo in the future. All right, puppies, I trust you to teleport to me. Hello, Sunflower. Hello, Aster Seed. Oh, leaving your little feathers around as presents, huh? All right, I'm going to gather those up and put those away. And let's go get our woodpecker. And then let's go get some of the plants that we think the woodpecker will enjoy. I'm so excited. And I learned some really, really interesting things. Hello, Pigment Fern. How are you? Oh, he looks very contemplative today. Like, he looks like he's thinking very serious pigment thoughts. Oh, are you coming up to say hello? Nope. Okay, well, good to see you. All right, let's come down here. How is everything down in the laboratory? Seems to be doing okay. Experiment 66, Assistant Freezer Bunny. Uh, mysterious glowy statue, which is so cool and thankfully not causing any issues. Bella's doing good. Iverson and Microchip are doing good. Good. So everybody's kind of just working on their own studies. Professor Cowplant, I have finally come to relieve you of a couple more of your creatures. Is this woodpecker? Yes, and there's going to be a reusable safari net free. And this woodpecker. And I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything I want to put in there for now. I don't know about putting in the mice. I guess we could put in a couple mice. So we'll release a couple of the mice that are inside of our safari nets um, that we've got in our inventory. And... Let me see, the wrens, and I want to put in the wood ducks, but we need to like have the wood ducks in the first place. Oh, I hear the girls! Good news, girls! Phew! I am back, and I have brought more sugar, Primrose, though it looks like you're doing okay. What? 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 What is this alien interloper doing in here? Putin, what are you doing in here? I don't even have a stray safari net that I can move her with. That's amazing. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead sugar. Oh, I know I have some sugar primrose. How you doing? You're doing fine on sugar, so I'm gonna put it away. There we go. And we have spots where I can put the little nuts, even though I'm really curious. So what can you do with the chestnut anyway? Oh, you can just turn it into like chestnuts. You can just peel them and turn them into chestnuts. And from there, you can use the chestnuts to make chestnut rice. If you have rice and sake and dried bonito or material of chestnut rice, you could do it over here too. Or you could smelt them into roasted chestnuts. I love roasted chestnuts. So I really wouldn't mind that. I really wouldn't mind that at all. Okay, let's see. All right, well, let's put them down on our little, our little platform here and peel all of them. <gasps> so many chestnuts, Lily. And then, oh, I have some vanilla in here. And then, are you guys gonna roast if I put you in here? Roasted chestnuts, please? No, no, is that, is that unacceptable? Does it have to be, it absolutely has to be smelted and not just put in the oven? Darn, darn. Well, we could get that going down in the ranger station we have set up, so I'm not too worried. All right, and put away the maple, the maple stuff and let us go. Oh, darling, take that. Take that kiss, take the love, grr. There's Agent Noodles. Um, oh, there's some Azuki beans just laying here. All right, so it looks like our little aliens. Are you having fun? Are you trying to turn on the sprinkler? Aki, you're the best gardener. You're the one who just like sticks around and actually works in here. <gasps> Look how many Azuki beans she has. She has been working so hard over here. It is gonna be so fantastic to dive in and like start cooking with the stuff she's gathering. What do you think we need to do to make them like little maple aliens happy? Cause I wanna make sure they're happy too. All right, so let's throw in the extra plants and seeds and things that we don't need into here. And is there anything we could use in here? Cute little, I wouldn't mind putting a cute little toadstool in with the woodpeckers. Um, let's see. Puppies, you're growling. You're gonna be fine. You know everybody here. Maybe they're not used to the aliens. Gooseberries. Um, you know, gooseberries aren't listed specifically as something the woodpeckers will eat, but I would put money down that they probably would enjoy those. <gasps> Wild columbines. Oh, those would be perfect even as decorative pieces in the area over there. Let's see, what else do we have? Here's some more gooseberries. All right, let's look in here. Let's see, flower chest, edible plants and seeds, um, bamboo ferns and ground cover, barberry, barberries, hmm. I really, I wanna find blackberries. Are they gonna be in here? Where would, where would blackberry, I, I really, you know, we go plant collecting all the time, but we really don't have as many plants as I think we do. It's fascinating, my gosh. There's a lot of maple saplings that are red in here, so that's good to note. Um, and a whole bunch of pine sap, which is pretty fun. We could decorate with the pine sap and the weeping milk caps around the area. So I'm gonna grab these, because we could put them not only like next to the wood, like inside the woodpecker aviary, but we could put them around the maple tree area as well. So, hmm, hmm. I could have sworn if I came over here, I would find like evidence. There's a huckleberry. Huckleberries are actually listed as one of the things pileated woodpeckers will kind of nibble on. Do I really not have a single blackberry bush like this? Huh. Well, huh. I guess we're gonna have to just use gooseberries and. Hmm, I don't, I feel like I'm going back empty handed puppies. All right, watch out puppies. I'm <laughs> just like diving through a pile of dogs. All right, anything in here? Cause I would have thought for sure there was more than just that. Let's see, dwarf mistletoe, gooseberries. Hmm, well, you know what guys? This is actually evidence that even though it feels like we do tons and tons of plant collecting, we could probably afford to just go and collect plants some days. We have a lot of flowers. Northern pitcher plants. I guess I could add in maybe one or two of those instead, but it's not Ah, uh, salals. Um, hmm. They're not really what I'm looking for. I want maybe woodland pink root. Hmm. And this is actually very important when you're thinking about building exhibits for animals because you want to make sure that the exhibit is functional, that it's not going to have just one plant that they're going to overeat, that they can give the plants a little bit of a break and kind of rotate between different plants and not overdo it. Um, savannah plant, nymphias, my sounds of frustration and, and like so many plants, so many choices and yet not enough, not enough choices for what I'm looking for. 
Hmm. Well, let's take some of these guys. I think some of these guys would be a good choice. And we'll just see what we can come up with. All right, puppies, come on. We have now got the little woodpeckers. I feel pretty confident about our choice in woodpeckeriness. All right, hello, Primrose. Darling, take that. Another kiss. Another kiss. All right, we're going to come down here. Captain Kaz, evidence of foreign maids having visited my house. I love it. It's very funny. And I'm just going to come on down. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, Sunflower. Life would be much faster if I just flew you everywhere, but still. All right, we've got this. We've got this. All right, so now we're going to head back. And really, if you guys have ideas, look at the paths as we walk past them. And if you have ideas for things we could put in the paths or on the paths, please let me know because I would really love to know about that. Just ways we could decorate the zoo. I'm thinking playgrounds. What do you like? What would you build for a playground and where here in Zudesia if you were going to do a playground? I really want to know. And you know what I think we need to put over here? I'm kind of beginning to feel like we need a big beautiful tree of some kind right here. Like instead of this rubber tree, I feel like we need a big giant uh, fir tree or pine tree or one of the spruce trees. And I feel like maybe we need one of these maple trees, maybe one of the red or orange ones right here to kind of invite you into the exhibit. So I think that's a good idea. I think that is a good idea. We'll work on that later. Oh, and I forgot to get the carpenter's fences. Darn bucket. Are there carpenter's fences over here? Let's check really quickly. Dun 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 Um, there's wood post actually, which kind of can be used as carpenter's fences. Um, and then let's see, sticks. I could make some carpenter's fences. You know what I think would actually be more more fun to make for that area? Well, actually... Hmm, hmm, puppies, hmm. We'll see. We'll see what we can get done. Because I'm thinking maybe we'll make a hedge fencing like this instead. But then I kind of want a carpenter's fence made out of glass so that we can see what is going on in the snake exhibit without having to like peer up over the fence. You can just see straight through it. So we'll work on that later because right now we are focusing. All right, everybody sit down. Oh, where is everybody? All right, come on, puppies. Come on, guys. Whoops, there you are. Okay, sit, Zozo. I sit pine on the on the stump, no less. That's adorable. And Lily, scooch this way. There you go. And there we are. Ooh, I have another chestnut. Yes, come here. Ouch, ouch. Okay, if you walk into those chestnuts, they really are vicious about just pricking you. But we have so many chestnuts. Oh, I would love to have some delicious. I mean, look at this chestnut rice. Oh, that would be so yummy. I would just need to like figure out where on earth to buy the sake and where to get. Okay, so if you just dry. Oh, so you just dry them and it made drag bonito. Okay, man, we could get into some really like fun international recipes pretty soon. And look at our little lake. Oh, it's looking so good. All right, you guys. So before we add in our little, our little woodpeckers, let's go ahead. I really think we need more bushes. So what we're going to probably be doing in the future is going out and finding more bushes like these. I don't know if we have any close by. That would be amazing if we did because I just really feel like we need more mid-level plants. We have low-lying plants with some of the fungus and some of the flowers and definitely with the ground cover that we have of all of the beautiful leaves, but we need more mid-level plants to offer a little bit of a breakup in how you're looking at the landscaping. That's important because remember when we're building a zoo and building exhibits, we're trying to think about the aesthetics of it as well as what's good for the animals and as well as what's just plain fun. Playing fun, like mushrooms. They're just so much fun. I love them. All right, so let's go ahead and columbines and columbines, columbines everywhere. And I'm already out of the bigger bushes. <laughs> I should have brought more. I I don't know why I didn't bring more. It just didn't. I didn't think I'd need it. But man, now that we're walking around, there's plenty of areas that could like benefit from having a few more little plants scattered around. All right, and then maybe like cute little cute little toadstool you can you can hang out right right um right down there little toadstool and then like a little weeping milk cap uh possibly back here instead of that piece of grass and maybe another little weeping milk cap maybe um right there there we go that's a little bit better but you see we're really <sighs> okay just one second because that bothers me all right puppies hang on a second 
we're going to take a really quick peek around this direction. I mean, even these plants would be better than nothing. So I'm going to grab the berry gardens. There we go. But I don't really, like, the berry gardens are kind of the wrong color for what we're doing. Oh, frustration. All right. Oh, goodness. It's a little raccoon. Oh, he's so cute. All right. Let's see. Anything in the area? Oh, and I forgot to grab food. Oh, well. We're almost done with the work day. Um, let's see. Where, oh, where? Man, guys, see what I mean? Like, even on these gigantic expeditions we go on, this is why we should just start having some in-house greenhouses. We can still go on fun expeditions and enjoy a beautiful day of exploration, but then we would be able to, like, put in an order at our greenhouse and be like, can you get these? Oh, look, evidence of an int. I love finding int tracks because int tracks are basically flowers. So fun. Okay, yeah, no evidence anywhere that I'm seeing of the kinds of bushes that we're looking for. So... I guess that's just a no-go for now. And we'll have to spruce the exhibit up. Oh, there are the ints. They're having like a little int meeting. Oh, that's so cool. We stumbled on a wild int meeting. What's down there too? Oh, it's a horse. All right. And nope, not seeing Lily. Oh, you look so majestic up here, Lily. Oh, there's another slime island. But yeah, I'm not seeing the types of bushes that we're looking for. So we'll have to just add that to the list of something to look for when we go on a expedition to collect plants and uh, a reminder that I need to hire like greenhouse workers, but uh, we'll get so much done if I can do it like that. Oh, and then let's see. Let me go ahead and gather up. Watch out guys. I kind of need all of these leaves. So please let mom have all the leaves. All right. Need these, need these. Did I just walk on some dwarf elder again? At least it's not slimes. Apparently I'm allergic to slimes from that huge sneeze earlier. All right, let's see. And this one. And I want this one. And I'm going to see if I can just go ahead and make... Is this a horse in here? Oh, Mr. Horse, hang on. Oh, my gosh. Holy moly. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, jeez. Okay, you're free. Oh my goodness, that stressed me out so much. Do you want some apples? Like, oh, we just tamed a horse. Okay, um, uh, Apple, I guess? Do I already have, I have already have a horse named Apple. I have a lot of things named Apple. Um, just he showed up and he's on a woodpecker day and he was in a tree. Um, Tangled. <laughs> Tangle. Your name is Tangle because you were, you were stuck in a tree and I'll have to come back for you. He's really, he's a wild horse. But, whoops, Tangle, there you go. But he was hurt, and now his health is all better. And he was, he was like, getting really hurt. So, Tangle, I'll be back for you. You're actually a wild horse. So it's more like we rescued a wild horse and, and just set him free again after that tree. How on earth did he get himself stuck in a tree? Like, that, I will admit, that takes a particular kind of talent, if you ask me, to get stuck inside of a tree. All right. Oh, my gosh, where am I? I did not think I wandered this far from home. Oh, thank goodness we have all of the trees to guide us now. That's what I meant earlier when I was talking about how fun it is that we have the signs, signs through the wilderness of habitat and like where we belong. All right, let's dig our way over. Dun 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 dun. All right, whoops, I'm gonna make the puppies sit down because it is time, you guys. Since we don't have anything else I can really add in here. Um, whoops, got myself stuck in the door. I mean, I guess do, with the spruce leaves, I don't know if the spruce leaves would feel like uh, the right thing. They kind of do, actually. All right, spruce leaves, never mind. I'm going to have to work. I'll, I'll work on the snake, water snake exhibit, and we'll kind of poke at that a little bit more tomorrow. There we go. But I kind of feel like this is what's needed. Just some, some little mid-level plants that sort of are sprinkled around the place and provide a little bit of balance just like their their logs oh we should add in some logs that would probably really help too all right let's see i'm gonna reclaim you actually and put you right there and there so yeah just kind of like this you know so you look around and it's not just like you're you need to have your eyes visually sort of broken up by the plants there we go there we go and yeah, actually, a, like a nice oak wood log, do I have any oak wood on me, would be perfect for this area. Good, that would be really good. In fact, that's what we need to put down. I'm going to put down some spruce wood logs. 
because what happens then is when you've got the log on the ground is you expect to have the bugs get into and under the log and that's perfect that's a perfect way to start sort of decorating the area in fact i'll even like maybe chisel this log and make it look kind of like torn apart a little bit that would be fun in the future i'll do that before um tomorrow as well so we can just look around and the logs are going to help us kind of gauge where the animals can eat the insects there! That should make them quite happy. I'm excited about that. All oh, right. In fact, I'm gonna put another log back here. Now that we've had the idea, it, it just was like an epiphany. It's like, if you want insects for the birds to eat, then you need to provide places for the insects to hide. So there we go. All right, and climbing over here. Oh, guys, this looks so good. Doesn't this look so good? Oh, and it started to rain, and the birds will be just fine in here. All right, so I don't think the berry gardens really match. Um, I mean, they could. They could, but I just, they're not what I want in here. So, Berry Garden, you come with me. And we have a little bench over here in case you guys didn't notice. So you can just kind of look around and admire all the animals and just see, think that they're so cool. I wonder if, I think oak wood would look better than spruce wood right there. Maybe even the maple wood. Um, right over here. Yes, I am that particular. And it's important to be that particular because, again, think about it. What happens if you provide more than one type of wood for the insects? You're going to get a bigger variety of insects. And a better variety in diet is usually the best answer for pretty much anything. Humans to animals. Um, you know, within things that you're supposed to be eating, I mean. All right. And finally. Phew. You guys ready for this? All right. Oh, my gosh. Look at him go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what a beautiful woodpecker! Oh, look at the little pileated woodpeckers! Oh, they're so pretty. They're just so, so pretty. Okay, don't take any damage. Okay, we're gonna have to clear out the chestnuts somehow. Uh, chestnuts, can I get rid of you somehow? Because I don't want you to, like, hurt my birds. Huh. Um, can I use silk touch? Okay, noted. We're going to have to constantly keep the chestnuts harvested so that they don't hurt the birds or anyone else. Well, actually, I don't think they do any damage. They just kind of make you jump back. So the birds should be okay, I hope. All right, so what do you guys think? Oh, my goodness. Our two little, our two little pileated woodpeckers. Look at them go. Hi, little guy. Yeah, you're just flying all over the place. Do you need, do you need something that's a little bit more common? Ooh, like a dead tree right here would be perfect. Oh, think about that, you guys. We could turn that into a dead tree, and that, again, would attract a bunch of insects. It would make it so that the woodpeckers would have... They really move around a lot, too, which is so cool. It would make it so that the woodpeckers can have, like, a lot of little places to burrow in. A dead tree would be absolutely perfect over there. So we'll, we'll build a little dead tree for them. And otherwise, it looks like they're enjoying the exhibit all right. Oh, he landed. Look how big he is. Pileated woodpeckers are huge. When I see them around here, I am so impressed. And some of the really cool things I learned about them, other than the fact that, oh, look at him go over to the wood. Other than the fact that they're so big, is that they also tend to form pairs where one pair stays together. <gasps> look at him. He's like punching away there. Oh my gosh. That is so awesome. Oh my goodness. No, go back over there. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm sorry. Oh, that was so cool. That was so cool. That was so cool. But with the woodpeckers, one pair will actually stay together in its territory all year round. And it's a pretty extensive territory, so they, they tend to, like, defend it. And they're, in the winter, though, they're pretty tolerant if other species of birds, other woodpeckers show up into their zones. But when it's breeding time, that's when they really start going, uh-uh, this is my zone, and they're going to defend it. Did I really lose it to the, the chestnut? Did I really lose my woodpecker to the chestnut? Oh, I'm so mad right now. All right. Noted. We very painfully just learned, if I want woodpeckers... That is, that is like the worst PR. I am blushing so hard right now. You should not like build a new woodpecker exhibit and then before you even leave it, your woodpeckers die. Noted, you guys. Don't keep chestnuts around your woodpeckers. I, I hope my very painful, humiliating, ouchy lesson that we just learned will teach you guys how to better take care of your animals and keep them safe and from harm. 
And the good news is Huck actually has a bazillion and a half woodpeckers in his territory. So I guess what we'll have to do now is go and catch some woodpeckers in Huck's zone. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so sorry, little woodpecker. Your friend... Oh dear, your friend didn't survive. That shouldn't have happened. Oh, I'm both humiliated and devastated at the same time. It's been a it's been a day full of graves. A day full of graves. Oh my gosh. All right, noted. Never keep prickly things where they can fly into them. But you're going to be okay, sir. You're going to be okay. I'll get you I'll get you another friend. I'll get you in fact quite a few more friends. Um so we will go and we'll gather more woodpeckers in the future at Huck's place, which will be good. Um, and then let's see. I do want to release a couple mice in here. Just a couple of them. I don't really mind what color they are. So let's see. Little white mouse and a little brown mouse. And we'll just leave them to kind of scurry around and enjoy the exhibit. Because um, this is fine. This is a multi-species exhibit. That should be good for them. And it also means I have some of my safari nets back, which is so important. All right. And then what I'll do is I will work some more on building a nice little dead tree, kind of chiseling away the logs. And I will also work on just really quickly throwing up the fencing and putting a little rock in the middle so we can have a nice northern water snake exhibit right here. Whew. So we have gotten a ton done today, you guys. And I am so excited, even though I'm really sad right now because we unfortunately just had a unexpected death here in the zoo before we even opened the exhibit, oh, which is quite sad. But we learned something. We learned something, you guys learned something, and now we can plan on getting on getting more woodpeckers in the future. So, sigh, sigh. It's a good excuse to go visit Huck and take some presents to him. So we'll probably do that pretty soon, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.